Orchids, uh, orchids delayed our production by about two weeks. Once. They did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After the TCT show in Birmingham, E3D invited me over for a tour of their headquarters. And it was insane to get a peek at just how much more they're working on aside from their signature hardens. But see for yourself. We moved up to Oxford two years ago now, and there were just four of us. Yeah, um, it was and what, myself. Myself, David, and Gabby. David and I had to employ both of our girlfriends to do like <laughs> accounting and stock management and dispatch, like of the pair yeah. of them, um, which was which was crazy. And Dave built the workshop from scratch out of sort of planks and wood. Josh coded the entire shipping system in Python yeah. by hand. Yeah, no, we've uh, so we've like we've grown all of this like ourselves, and we've been engineers that have done all of this and like building the business. But now. Is it's got to a point where the business is the business aspect of the business is so large. This is Dave. Oh, Dave! Dave's the unsung hero of anyway. E3D, not often appearing in videos. I mean, growing from doing you know a few hundred hot ends a month up to now, where we are doing like you know many many times more than that. Um, we've had to we've meet we've meet, we've been through a couple of machinists. Um, you know we now have like the original guy who did all the stuff for us, but an additional two people so that we can like we can distribute the load and we can get parts made like in high quality with sensible turnaround times. Mm. And it's not just machining, it's all the other things that go into it like getting electronics that work really well. Like we've got fantastic people on like heating and sensing at the moment which has been like a, a big, big upgrade in how we've been managed to do things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One of the best things about load sharing with suppliers is you never know quite if somebody's going to have a holiday, if some of the, the people operating their machines are going to be unwell. I remember suffering through our first Chinese New Year and they'd be like, not realising. You're all going away on holiday. Where are our heater cartridges? <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes, so now we, uh, now we stockpile hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, like the dev process on Titan was was <laughs> hectic. Like we started out obviously 3D printing all the parts. Um, when we got closer to a final design, we moved to SLS. Um, so yeah. we were SLSing parts. Then when it, when we went to injection mold them, we used one of our like UK suppliers that we'd used in the past for our fan ducts. Um, but that was that was a real nightmare. They let us down twice. We had to redo the mold because like they just went up to scratch. It was. We, run, we ran 5,000 parts and they just were not good enough. So we ended up having to have an entirely new tool cut. We had to throw 5,000 parts in the bin. Man, that was a, that was a painful it process. Was one of the most painful things that we've, that we've had to do. Seeing those boxes yeah. stacked up outside, outside the bins, 5,000 Titans ready to go in the rubbish. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. That was but awful. It's, yeah, it's just you've got to have, you know, you've got to be able to draw that line and say that, you know, that's, that's it, it's just not good enough. That's R and D cost. That is it's a painful cost, but it's but you know, you've just gotta take it. Eighteen yeah. months, but still. Since we drew the sketch of the small gear, big gear, <laughs> and then the film just go like this, it'll be great. <laughs> we just have to solve the problem of where does the idler go, how do we tension it, but that's all easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was a long time in the coming, but now that we've got a couple more guys who are able to help us and work really closely with us, like our engineering bandwidth has gone up massively, so we can expect to see things that we've been promising for a long time actually come to fruition. Yeah, no, we're really happy with where we are now with Titan, but it's, yeah, it's been a road. We're hoping to get the mirrored one uh, modeled up and sent out to them soon, so we'll be able to have two next to each other. Mm. We've done some small updates, the lever's much improved now. Yeah, and soon we're going to be having a, a, a heat sink on the lid. So the lid mm -hmm. is a heat sink, so there's no, there's no necessity for a separate heat sink, which will make the whole product much more compact, um, great for deltas, and you can get away with an insanely small pancake motor with that 3 to 1 gearing ratio. Mm -hmm. So pretty excited about that. Really lightweight package. I, we've definitely not lost sight of the fact that hot ends and particularly V6 are a hugely core part of our business. Um, we're looking to fill out the lines a bit. We've got new materials for nozzles. We've got different nozzle variants and sizes coming out. And fl flow rates from, from ridiculously like just really yeah. squeeze out the plastic to tiny, tiny, tiny nozzles that can do insane detail that, you know, to the point of looking a bit like an SLS print, you know, I mean, they're, they're yeah. ridiculous. I think one of the things that we've really, really learned, um, in you know, when we were first developing V6, we were, let's try and make the best hot end for all and for everyone. 
Um, and I think one of the big realizations is that physics doesn't really permit you to make one hot end to rule them all that will be best for everyone because different people have different requirements. So now our focus is on enabling and facilitating people to build from E3D components exactly the system that suits their needs from a whole range of parts. Yeah, so yeah. like to go with that, we've got, I mean, three different nozzles. No. Yeah, three different nozzle materials. So we've got the stainless steel, the hardened steel, and the brass. But we're also introducing copper nozzles as well. And those are all going to be available in like every size. We've started realizing that the like a lot of our customers are actually kind of research people doing research. So whether it's a company that are developing a new printer, whether it's a university, whether it's like whatever whatever the project might be, people tend to like turn to us because we have whatever they need in whatever size, whatever variety. And everything's always, always repeatable. Like every, all of our nozzles are the same. exactly the same throughout. So not only doing that, like our core business, but also looking to support manufacturers, printer manufacturers, um, in the development of custom products for them as well. So there's quite a lot of people out there that use our hot ends on their machines. Some of them like, you wouldn't even recognize as an E3D hot end. I'm excited about the you know the next generation hot end. Um, but all, I think it's worthwhile saying about the ecosystem really. I mean the fact that we started off with the V6. Well, we started off with the V0, yeah. um, but you know now we've got the V6. Everything's interchangeable. All of the nozzles, the different blocks. You know all of our uh, temperature sensing equipment. Like all of that, everything is just. You just swap one bit out, swap another bit in, change your, you want to, you know, run a thermocouple, you just run a thermocouple cartridge. Yeah. All fits together. Yeah. The thermistor cartridge. Oh my God. The thermistor cartridge. <laughs> Glorious. Like going from the thermistor in the tiny hole with yeah. the little M3 screw and then... Uh, and to think that that was a great innovation when we introduced it, the clamping thermistor Yeah, it was the clamping. Cartridge. I know. Uh, that was... But that was horrific. I mean, it was it, that was that was an iteration on wrapping an entire hot end in capton, which mm. is just. I mean, imagine that. Yeah, I, yeah, it is amazing, and I think it will. Well, I would like to see everybody go down that route. Really, I mean, yeah. it's um, you know, a, a cartridge temperature sensor is. It just makes sense. We're at our secure location, secret R and D facility that we've brought Tom along to to show all the development that's been going on. We've got mill, we've got a lathe, we've it's got... come like, a long way in three months. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was an empty shell. This was, a, yeah. A badly broken shell. Very. So we have laser cutters, a whole bunch of stuff that we can use to prototype things in-house. It's making our prototyping system very, very slick. We can now yeah. come go from kind of idea, concept, definition, through to actual final part that we can, uh, that we can test within, you know, days. We've been doing a lot of development work on materials recently, um, which we're pretty excited to share yeah. with the world. Really good facilities for that as well. Got my vacuum oven, she's my baby, and a bunch of extrusion systems, spooling, so we can do the whole mix compound test thing, like really fast iteration loop in-house and develop like new materials and new features and new properties very quickly. I suppose the message is um, engineering plastics and always have a support material. Um, and so for us, we think that um, support materials, really great support materials, be they soluble or breakaway or both, are one of the next big barriers and holdbacks in open platform 3D printing. Um, so being able to have not release not just a material, but a material and support system that people know are gonna work together well and free them of the kind of traditional geometric constraints is really important to us. And that's really the whole kind of ethos of Spoolworks is that we're solely focused on exceptional materials with exceptional properties and not simply emulating what else is out there on the market. That's the entirety of our development and forward-looking focus is on novel new materials. There's some kind of interesting stuff that we're doing like beyond just standard 3D printing materials as well. So using scaffold for interesting things. Um, mm, yeah. We've been like, yeah, we've been wrapping composites on scaffold um, and that's been including parts printed in edge. So you can print something that is like use a support material intrinsically for the print, but then you end up with mechanical parts left over, like 3D printed parts left over in a composites sh like shell. So we can, we've been playing a lot with composites and we are looking to like publish our research into that in a few few weeks time, which we're super yeah. excited about. But there's a lot of learning and tinkering and playing around that's, that's happening down here. Um, and some of it we do as a service to other companies, some of it's just for our own interest. Um, but we're doing a lot of very cool research. Yeah. Playing as well. I mean, yeah. we like to play, yeah. let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> Not necessarily with a particular end point. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it is just learning. It's all learning. Mm. There are some stupid projects that we have going on, which we'll 
never turn into anything useful for <laughs> anyone, but they're just interesting and cool. So yeah. make a good blog post. I guess going forwards, um, like building capabilities, uh, building like hot end capabilities to be able to process these plastics. So things like, you know, high performance hot ends, water cooling so that you can run a hot end in a, in a chamber, which is, you know, maybe heated, maybe not um, having like insane heated beds. So we've got this uh, hot, <laughs> this product called Project Mordor, which we're releasing, um, which is like a cast aluminum heated bed, which will go to like crazy temperatures. Um, so building an ecosystem of parts that can be used to, to do crazy things um, and just like giving that capability to like the community and the and the industry as a whole, I think will enable 3D printing to move forward. So like giving research institutions those kind of tools to do development and testing. I suppose one, one that people always, always ask us about is, is the colour mixer or the material mixer. Yeah, it's got this name, the colour mixer, but our kind of our heart isn't really in mixing colours and making like a product that makes aesthetically beautiful prints. We're kind of interested in something that's able to make mechanically interesting prints. So being able to mix either like two or more materials so that you can have varying mechanical properties through a part. And we've got prototypes, we've been playing with that whole concept for ages, it's just never managed to resolve itself into a sufficiently reliable and like productizable thing. Um, but I think we're, we're going for it again. Yeah, it's yeah. all about it. Like three D printing is all about the materials and the ability to process those materials. Yeah, and the more useful three D printing can be, I think that's the fitness function that works for us. Um, and the where we see limitations is there's definitely usability issues and stuff in you know software and ease of use. Um, but that's not necessarily our area of expertise. Um, and I think that what we're looking at is being able to process challenging materials and having challenging materials with advanced properties that are really seriously useful. I guess the, the message is like materials that are useful in themselves and materials that come with paired support materials. Like that's that's the end of it, I suppose. Yeah. That's it. Once that's done, 3D printing's finished. Yeah. When you can actually manufacture um, reliably and efficiently high performance parts. In any shape you want. Mm. Yeah. On a laughter. With no tooling costs and scale up as just a print farm. Start a thousand dollars and scale on up linearly. That's mm -hmm. the dream. <laughs>